Welcome back, you are watching Sly Slime and this is our beginner command block tutorial series. Last time we learned how to use relative coordinates to affect the world without having to know specific locations beforehand. This time we're going to expand that to selecting things in the world. If you recall in the very first episode of this series I used a slash give command to give myself a command block. Let's use that again. I will give myself a golden ingot. So slash give slice slime gold underscore ingot. So that's great. I gave myself gold. Now let's say I wanted to put this into our command block. Give slice slime gold underscore ingot. Press the button and it still gives me a gold ingot. So that's great. Now I have a machine that gives me gold ingots. However, Let's say I wanted to share my fancy gold giving machine with you guys. That doesn't work because it only gives me gold ingots. It gives a player named exactly sliced lime gold ingots. This is where we need command selectors. Command selector is something that replaces a name of a player or an item in Minecraft with a placeholder that will be replaced by the game with an actual name according to certain criteria and you can see the available ones listed directly in the command block interface. Use at P to target the nearest player, use at R to target a random player, use at A to target all players, or use at E to target all entities. We're gonna go with at P for the nearest player. Let's try it out. It still gives me a gold ingot, because I am the closest player, because, well, I'm the only player, I'm alone in this test world. In fact, we could go with at R and it would do the same thing, because I am the only player, so I can be the only randomly chosen player. And, of course, at A would do exactly the same thing. And now I have a machine that will give all players on a server a gold ingot. It doesn't need to know any names beforehand, so I could share this with all of you guys and it would work for you as well. At E is a bit different. If we tried to do the same thing, we would try to give all entities a gold ingot. However, there are no other entities around with an inventory, so we can't do that. Let's do something else instead. We're gonna use a slash say command. And if you remember from a previous tutorial, a slash say command will simply make the command block behave as if it had chatted through a normal chat window. I told you before that a command selector will be replaced by the game with a player name. Let's do that in the say command and go slash say at p. This will cause this command block to say a line to the chat with the name of the closest player. We can also mix words and our command selectors. This will replace only the selector with the name. So now we've made it say hi. It doesn't have to be a single name. Let's try out at e for all entities and see what it says. So somewhere up here it's going to go hi, slice slime, pig, 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 rabbit, 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 pig, pig, and so on, listing all the entities in the world. There's quite a lot of stuff here. All the mob types are entities in Minecraft, but also any item thrown on the ground is an entity, any projectile is an entity, and a whole bunch of other things. It's fairly unlikely that you'll actually want to do something to every single entity in the game, or even to every single player in the game. To fix that, we are going to restrict the selection of players or entities with something called a command selector argument. The argument will go through the list and match every single entity or player to a certain criteria, and filter out anything that doesn't match. To start off, let's select everything within a 10 block radius. We do that by adding a selector argument within brackets and typing r equals 10. Let's try that. And then we get only me. Let's extend it a bit to 50 blocks, perhaps. Uh, we still only get me. However, we can create an entity by just throwing an item out on the ground. Now, if we press it, we get high item, item, ingot, gold, and slice slime. All the pigs and the sheep in the world are still there, of course, but they're no longer being selected by our command. So let's leave our ingot here, and let's add on more to this. We can further restrict the selection by adding more arguments, and let's adding a type argument and say we want type item. Now if we press it, we get only the ingot. But I can throw out this button, press it again, and now we get high item item ingot gold and item.tile.button. 
Of course we can do other things than just say the names of these entities with the selection. Let's do a teleport command with type equals item and r equals 10. Now we can use the relative coordinates that we learned last time to teleport these two items 10 blocks into the air. And they disappear. The button comes falling down again and the ingot gets stuck in the tree. So now we have learned how to select things and how to affect things individually in the world. There is a list of all the available command selector arguments under the target selector arguments section on the commands wiki page on the Minecraft wiki. That is a very important resource and one that you should probably have a bookmark to in your browser if you do a lot of command block things. I will of course link that in the video description. We are not going to go through the details of all the target selector arguments in this video, but I will go through them and briefly explain what they do. You can select things by coordinates in the world. Instead of type equals items r equals 10, I could put in specific coordinates that I want to test for, like x equals 1, y equals 10, and z equals 400. This can also be written as a short form without the x equals, y equals, and z equals, as 1, 10, and 400. These have to appear first if you do this. You could also add r equals 4 to this, and that can also then be written in a short form of just comma 4. If you recall when I talked about relative coordinates last time, I mentioned that there are a few cases where relative coordinates do not work. This is one of those cases. You are not allowed to use relative coordinates in a command selector argument. We've already talked about the maximum radius, which is the R argument, but you can also do a minimum radius. RM equals 10 would select everything further away than 10 blocks. You can also select players based on what game mode they are in. M equals and a number selects for that game mode, with 0 being survival mode, 1 creative mode, 2 adventure mode and 3 spectator mode. A very useful selector argument is C, for count. C equals 10 will restrict the amount of things affected by the command to 10. If there are more than 10 entities that would otherwise have been affected by the command, the closest 10 will be selected. We can see this by throwing out a bunch of more items on the ground here, which become entities and then running the command again. The very closest thing is me, because I am the one running the command. But 9 of the items I just threw out also got teleported, because they're closer than the pigs and the chickens that got teleported last time. Let's quickly go over the rest of the target selector arguments. You can select things by experience level, minimum or maximum, by using the L and LM arguments. You can select things by score in a scoreboard, and scoreboards are something we'll also get to in a later tutorial. You can also select things by team, by name, by their place in a volume instead of just a coordinate, by rotation, or by type. This can all be a bit much to take in when you're starting off. My suggestion is that you go experiment with your own devices, put in selectors and selector arguments, and try to make some simple things. If you need more information, you can always go and look at the Minecraft wiki and the commands page. If you found this tutorial helpful, please leave a like. And if you have any questions or need any help, leave a comment in the comment section below. Next time, we're going to look at summoning things with the slash summon command. Until then, good luck with your command block experiments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.